Hello, this is a do-it-yourself tutorial of converting a MoU Weilong GTS 3x3 cube into a magnetically enhanced 3x3 cube by inserting 48 neodymium magnets into specific locations throughout the workings of the cube. Like many people, the GTS is my favorite cube. I probably have about nine of them now, and some of them have different um, color schemes, as you'll see a couple of pictures here. But... Um, what we'll do here is I'll show you a list of what we'll need. Of course, the first thing you'll need is the cube itself. Uh, the Weilong is, is perfect for this conversion because of the way the pieces are molded and the amount of space inside the cubey pieces. So, like I said, first you'll need a Weilong GTS. You'll also need 48 magnets. And the neodymium magnets that I chose for this project uh, measure 4 millimeters by 2 millimeters. And I purchased these at Apex Magnets, and the website is www.apexmagnets.com. And also you'll need the uh, gluing agent, which uh, I chose to use a two-part epoxy. I can tell you out of experience, use a slow-curing epoxy, one that uh, has a good handling time of 30 minutes or more. I chose DEVCON 2-ton epoxy and it had a handling time of 30 minutes and a full cure time of eight hours and that gives you plenty of time to work with. Now what's interesting about placing these magnets where they belong is really there's only one position that you will use and you repeat it over and over. We're going to use the same location for 24 pairs of magnets and you'll see me pointing to this right here. It's the right corner piece the left interior side of that piece, an edge piece, which is the right side of that edge piece, is where the other magnet is. This is where you epoxy it. And I'll get into the specifics here in a minute, but your mind and your eye wants to see that there are three different locations to put these magnets, but trust me, it's this one spot here over and over as you rotate the cube one way and work your way around the cube to, to the four positions. As you rotate it, 180 degrees go the other direction but you're still putting it essentially in the same spot but this is where the the magnets go so I just wanted to point that out okay here's what the cube looks like completely stripped down I've left the center pieces in because to me it's just easier to handle while I'm gluing and stuff like that and you'll get a little epoxy on your thumbs and I'll show you what to do with that later but here is the location of all the magnets you can see them in this one shot and I'll zoom in and you see a little bit closer here and then this other shot is going to be a different angle but the same cube the same magnets the same position okay so that was just a short little introduction and now we're ready to begin so I'm gonna show you here's the epoxy that I used DEFCON and it's a two-ton epoxy it's got a slow cure so a uh, good handling time of 30 minutes. That's about how long it will take you to do this. And here's the back of the package. You can see that um, it's curing time and it's, it's handling time. Here are a couple of pictures of the bank magnets. Like I said, for my particular uh, conversion, I used a 4 millimeter by 2 millimeter magnet. Now, the Cubicle introduced their M-Series GTS in the fall of 2016, just about a week ago. I'm assuming they're using this size magnet they may be using one slightly larger uh, this particular magnet has approximately a two pound pull so I think it works fine uh, they also sell this uh, the neodymium magnets in a four millimeter by one millimeter which I've also purchased some of these and uh, you know you'll get the same effect of kind of having that lock in but not as strong so that might be something I'm going to experiment with next but here I'm using a 4 by 2 millimeter a 4 millimeter by 2 millimeter um, they make them larger uh, you're kind of limited inside the uh, QB pieces of the way long but what makes the way long so good um, such a great cube to do this conversion this um, procedure on is that there's plenty of room in this in the piece and there's a nice little ledge you'll see in the photos that the uh it just nestles down comfortably the magnet does and uh, it's great and another thing that's nice about um or what's easy about doing this this project is you don't need clamps because the uh the uh two pound pull per magnet 
as they're being held to each other uh, is more than enough to clamp them into place. Okay, now if you haven't, go ahead and remove all your uh, pieces or pull the edges off of your pieces and mix up your epoxy. Epoxy is uh, properly mixed uh, part A to part B, the same amount per part. And then you want to mix it up real well. Here I'm using a um, popsicle stick that I've trimmed the end on. And um, mix it together real well and then just kind of gather it up into a... Uh, a little clump in the middle of a I just happen to use a little piece of plastic here uh, you could use a paper plate anything like that something that's not going to pick up like you know not a paper towel but something smooth and then also um, you don't need to mix a whole lot maybe about a dimes diameter of each part and then mix together because we're only going to be using just a tiny tiny dab just a little drop and, and here on this slide you'll see at the end of this stick which is squared off. That's basically just a cotton swab with a little wooden stick, uh, not pointed. I found out that like uh, toothpicks and stuff are too hard to work with. It really needs to have a uh, a blunt end. It just holds. It makes a little better little ball of glue on the end, epoxy. So here you see this, and then the next side, and then in this position here where I'm pointing at, this is where you're going to place one tiny little drop. Notice I said tiny. I mean small. It doesn't take a lot. And even saying that, after I, I did my first conversion, I'm like, gee, I still use too much. I mean, it's not messy, but you'll you'll get a little, little mess here and there, and I'll tell you what to do about that later on. Okay, so this is the first place. Position a tiny little drop, and then go back and dab a little bit more epoxy, and then go to this other position. Like I said, only a small amount. Then peel one little magnet off of your little twig of magnets they'll form a little stick because they like to stay together and then place it on the left side as you see me pulling it apart here then bring on the right side the stick of magnets and then that will pull the left magnet right into its place and then with a little effort what you need to do is use your um, thumb and just really it's it's it'll wear your thumb out your thumb and finger but you need to pinch the uh, magnet that needs to be on the right side, pinch it off, and then it'll just lock right into place. So you'll have the pair of magnets in their position. And here I'm showing a, um, I'll, I'll zoom in so you see a little bit better. And maybe I'll show you a position here. Uh, this One of these images is going to be a little bit overexposed because I want to show detail. Okay, now after you've placed that, of course, you want to make sure that it's, you want to be consistent. Wherever you place it in the cube, you want to just repeat that over and over, 23 more times. Okay, so here I am with the little pointed uh, stick here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to position the first, the, the right magnet. I find it's just easier to do that one. You, you have more light on that particular, on the corner piece. So push it down almost all the way to the bottom. There's a little tray-like thing inside the uh, QB piece and then a ledge on, on, on the left side of it. And it'll position itself up a little bit from that. So it won't be setting all the way down there, but you'll see what I'm talking about. And then work in the, um, the edge piece and move that magnet down where it's even with the right magnet. And I tend to use an eye loop quite a bit when I'm working on a cube. So you see it here as, um, as I'll look through the eye loop, it's actually up to my eye. I'm just showing this for the detail. But uh, to really study the location of each magnet, like I said, you want consistency through this project. Uh, but the little magnets seem to seat themselves really well. They're kind of consistent the way they just kind of feel their way into that part of the cube piece. So, But I'm just showing this and emphasizing the importance of being consistent. It's also very important, maybe the most important thing is that your polarity has to be continual throughout the cube. And here you see me checking. Um, as I'm showing the stick piece of the magnets, they need to be drawn to this magnet that you're seeing in this picture. Now what I try to do to make sure that I have this oriented each time is I'll actually do it from the other end of the stick and you should feel a certain pushing away motion. You really don't want to get the uh, magnet any closer than I have it pictured here because it will 
more than likely pull the glued magnet off the cube and then it'll stick to the stack and then you have to pull it off of that and stick it back on. But what I'm saying here is you're going to be doing this procedure 23 more times from what you're seeing this picture. So you want to check your polarity. I did for every single one. I just double checked. Even though I laid the stick of magnets down, when I picked it up each time, I checked for polarity because it has to be the same. There's no... There's no other choice. It just has to be identical throughout each each um, time that you glue it. The magnets have to be in this specific polarity uh, position. Okay, and, and here I'm just inspecting the position of all the uh, magnets that I've glued so far. It's, it's also important that I should point this out. Um, you may not be able to tell from the photograph, but I'm doing this, this project here by placing the cube on a, on a little sheet of glass. This is a little pane of glass. So you want to keep the, uh, the internal workings of the cube perfectly squared up as you're doing this because the cubes, they draw on each other. They're pulling each other. And that's the position that they'll dry in, that the, that the epoxy will harden in. So here you see me pushing down the cube uh, inside workings onto a piece of glass. And here's another photograph. And I just wanted to emphasize that uh, this helps keep everything squared up and, and it assures you that your uh, magnets will stay where they need to be and not creep around and move on you while you're working on other sections of the cube. And so you'll want to do um, all 24 pairs. Like I said, there's a total of 48 magnets. And constantly check your alignment. You've got a pretty good amount of time here, you know, half hour to 45 minutes to kind of uh, maneuver them if for some reason one's kind of creeped out of position. So constantly check the location because um, they're going to dry and that's going to be, you know, that's where they'll be. And make sure that your uh, your cube body is squared up. Use a flat surface. Okay, then like I said, I, I chose to leave my uh, center caps on just because it, it was more comfortable holding the cube this way while uh, epoxying the magnets into position. But despite being careful with the epoxy, um, some did get on my thumbs, particularly when I was having to pinch the little magnets off and putting them and put them in position. So you'll get a little uh, epoxy residue on the caps and uh, rubbing alcohol works fine taking that off. It's no problem. So just check the alignment of your magnets and make sure your, uh, your cube body is very square and let it set for several hours. On this particular cube, I let it set for four hours before I handled it again. And... Like I was talking about the uh, cleaning up epoxy, occasionally, even though you're very careful moving the little wood stick with a little dab of uh, epoxy, you'll get a little stringer, like just a little thread of epoxy that will sometimes lie across a piece. And what you see me here is just kind of soaking the end of a uh, cotton swab and just going along, really observing every part of the cube and where there's any like uh, residual epoxy, just cleaning that up with uh, rubbing alcohol. This was after about four hours. So after about four hours, it's safe to slowly kind of move the, uh, the uh, cube around. I still wouldn't do any, you know, fast movement or stuff like that. You really want it to cure a good eight hours. But four hours into it is a good time to start cleaning up little, um, like I said, the little strands of epoxy that may just be kind of superfluous that you know, in places that you don't want them. And um, I also noticed that as I was putting the, uh, the pieces back on, the uh, outside pieces, that occasionally uh, epoxy would, there'd be like just a tiny minuscule amount of epoxy at one of the uh, little footholds that you'll see right here. I, I'll zoom in here. And you just kind of clean that away, just kind of chip it away. And after about another hour, so you're probably going to be about six hours into the project, like I said, you really want this particular epoxy to set up and cure. You can go ahead and uh, do just a ro rotational uh, uh, exam of the cube to make sure that it moves. I mean, hopefully you haven't glued the cube together, but uh, if you're careful, you're not going to get epoxy anywhere that would seal the uh, mechanism up. So, you know, do this little test here. And now it's time to put your cubie pieces back together and, you know, just be careful. If they don't, if they don't go into position, just go slow and see what's wrong. Is there like a little piece of uh, epoxy that, you know, a little drop somewhere that needs to be scraped off? If so, do it. Um, these parts are remarkable in their tight tolerances. I mean, they fit together. It's just 
really they're really extremely well made cube so any little you know extra piece of uh, epoxy or you know residue or something is going to keep it from seating properly so just be careful to make sure that the uh, that the cube pieces come together like they should here's just a little dry run with no lube or tensioning just to check the action of the cube And now since you've handled the cube, uh, now's a good time to go ahead and clean it up again with a little rubbing alcohol. Just kind of work your way around the cube and kind of get it clean. Here's a neat little uh, shot showing the uh, mag magnetic work, the attraction between the cube pieces. And here's another little example. And on this particular cube, I, I bought a do-it-yourself kit, so it came unstickered. So here's the set of stickers that I chose. So I'll be re-stickering it. And after you've stickered it, of course, you want to set the tension and lubricate and do all that good stuff. So here I'm lubricating with a product called Hetman. I'm a professional band instrument repair technician and uh, happen to use this stuff a lot. It's uh, I like number six on the pieces and number seven on the core. That's kind of equivalent to lubrical standard for the number six and the number seven would be kind of like the weight five uh, cubicle lube. So, and I go back and forth. I think this is also silicone based, so very similar. Except to me, it seems like the Hetman lasts a long time. It just doesn't seem to ever evaporate. So it's pretty good stuff. Okay, and here I'm adjusting the tension. And I guess I kind of go over the board with this, but um, I don't know, I like working with precise machinery and stuff like that. And so here I'm using a caliper to check the expansion on one side of a cube. And basically I have this same setting on, I guess I have about eight or nine GTS cubes now. Seven and I've got two on the way, yeah. So that'll be nine. And I usually have them set to about this tension, 2.38 I think is what it is. But uh, I'm not a... I'm not a speed cuber. I just like working with like real tight tolerance things and machinery and stuff like that. So it's, it's just kind of fun. Okay. Now you do a couple of spins, work the lube in, do some M slices, do some other things, just to make sure everything moves smoothly. And here's something that people always seem to overlook and, I used to not give this thing much attention, and then one day I said, well, I've got all these GTS cubes, let's give it a try, and that's the break-in tool, and, and it works. Um, this isn't the way that you do it in this picture, but that kind of shows the position of the cube. I just kind of hold it tight, like against me, myself, my body, and uh, I do about 16 uh, M slices like this per six sides. And uh, after it's lubed, and what's crazy is it's just so smooth after you do this. It's crazy smooth. It really is. Okay, and here's the final product. A nice little magnetic GTS, or what the cubicle, the cubicle calls a GTS-M. Makes sense. M for magnet. And going back to the cubicle, I've noticed like on YouTube videos, people uh, debating. Not really debating, but maybe questioning is, is the cube worth $49? Well... For one thing, for, for the man hours involved, for the two fellows sitting at Cubicle making these things, of course it's worth $49. There's a lot of work that goes involved in these things. Uh, but, you know, I mean, it, it's a personal thing. Will it fit your turning style? Is it something that you're looking for? Have you tried one? These are other things that you need to think about. But as far as the money involved, oh, it's, it's certainly worth it. I can assure you of that. I've built two of these things now. I can assure you the amount of time and, and just getting it right after a couple of experiments. The first time I, I tried this, I used a, a, a quicker drying epoxy and I got one layer in and I'm like, oh my gosh, after six minutes, my epoxy dried up. I had to start over. So uh, yeah, a little experimentation there. I can tell you it's worth $49. Or, you know, uh, you can do something like I did, this little project. And, uh, you know, normal price of a, of a Waylong GTS is $17. Um, I bought 150 uh, 
four by two magnets and 100 four by one magnets and with shipping and everything it was about thirty four dollars but I can do five cubes out of that so when you consider your time and patience and all of that stuff um, if you just don't want to mess with that of course it's worth forty nine dollars you know and I just applaud the uh, cubicle for being you know remaining on the cutting edge of, of all this cubing um, kind of a just you know evolution i mean it, it's constantly changing it really amazes me i got in, involved not as a big time cuber but in 1980 when i was 16 years old when the first cubes were released in the united states and to see where they've come now it's just incredible it just blows my mind and it's it's interesting that the cubicle is like really on the cutting edge of that evolution as it's changing so that's good to see well i tried to keep this video at 20 minutes and i've just gone past it so i'm going to cut this short um uh, so um, thanks for watching and happy cubing. I hope this helps. Let me know. Let me know what you come up with. Okay, bye.